I'm in Big Water, Utah. We're heading off on a bikepacking trip doing the Grand Staircase. We plan to do this bikepacking.com route of 160 miles over four days. Starting at its southern point in Big Water, we headed clockwise, although we did cut out a bit by taking Route 89 directly to Cottonwood Canyon Road. Despite some ups and downs, the first day's ride was mostly pleasant on well graded surfaces. The sun was out, wasn't too hot, and we made steady progress. The only mechanical issue that couldn't be resolved was a faulty derailleur. Melissa returned to Big Water and caught up with us in her truck. As you'll see, this mishap actually ended up saving our butts on day two. The day's riding ended at a site at the top of a humongous hill that had us in various states of pushing, huffing and puffing. Well, mostly. I have to admit I was not in the highest of spirits after that chilly night. However, hot coffee and oatmeal in my belly cheered me up. Once the sun rose, we packed and we were ready for the road. Day two was going to be a toughie. 40 miles in total, but about 24 miles after Grosvenor Arch, the road was washed out and impassable to the support crew. We'd be going it alone until the vehicles could take a detour and meet us on the other side of the impassable section. going well so far today day two about 10 miles in another uh, 30 to go today and another couple of thousand feet of climbing And then after 16 and a half miles, things started going up. We got some serious hiker bike.
At the top of this hill is where things got interesting. After regrouping and some lunch, Frank, one of the stronger upfront riders, headed off. As I was ready, I soon followed, telling the five remaining that I'd see them when they caught up. I didn't see any of them again that day. More pushing. Oh, it never ended. The road started going up and down and up in quick succession. It wasn't that the climbs were long or overly steep, it's just that they were so bad. Rocks, sand, rocks and sand, ruts, more rocks, more sand. As soon as I would lose my riding line, I'd grind to a halt and then have to manhandle the bike up to a point where I could remount. This on off made progress slow. The sun was shining and I was running out of water. It's Deep sections with deep sand, rocks. I took a tumble back there. Okay, the pads saw me right. I caught up with Frank, who was also not having the best of times. And just when I had got to the point of cussing rather loudly and colorfully, we found the damaged section. Within minutes, I heard voices. It was Melissa, no, no, no. yesterday's abandonment, with Ken and Randy searching for us lost bikers. With still about 10 miles to go, fading light and dehydration had us willingly throwing the bikes and ourselves into the truck. There was still the matter of five other riders somewhere behind us, likely to be equally thirsty and demoralized and soon to be unable to see where they were going. At the camp, Melissa, Ken and Randy tried to coordinate further extractions via sporadic texts and in-reach satellite messages. They headed off into the darkness while all we could do was set up our tents, have dinner and turn in. During the night, I'd heard the rescue truck returning, so I was hoping we had more at camp than when we'd gone to bed. Sure enough, Jeff and Andrew had been found and extracted, but still out there was Eric, who'd been camping solo, and Sang and Chico. Melissa's truck was dispatched once more, while all we could do was hang out and wait. The morning dragged on until eventually we heard an engine and the triumphant return of our lost riders. It had been a chilly and rather cosy night for Sang and Chico in a one person tent, but they seemed to be no worse for wear. However, they were done and wouldn't be riding any more this trip. As the morning was wearing on, those of us still carrying on got finalized and ready to leave. It was nearly lunchtime and we still had some riding to do. Yep. decided to call it a day and loaded their bikes on the vehicles. With Frank and Jeff way ahead, I rolled on steadily with Eric to the lunch stop at about mile 20. One by one people are dropping off and I'm not sure how much further I can go but I'll do my best. By the time we caught up with everyone chilling in a nice spot, I decided it was time for me to quit too while I was still not an absolute total grump. Frank, Eric and Jeff were still up for carrying on, so we bade them farewell and set about adding my bike to the collection on the back of Melissa's pickup. It was then a rather bumpy journey back to bigger water and relative civilization. Of course, some of the most spectacular views were on the dramatic descent from the plateau. It would have been amazing to ride, but whatever, I was done. I think we all had a blast regardless, and I'm looking forward to more adventures real soon. <laughs>